Well, we can go live now to Stuart Hodinot, a senior researcher at the Institute for Government, a London-based think tank, which has been looking at NHS pay and funding. Thanks for joining us here on BBC News. We heard in that uh, report there from Megan that uh, junior doctors uh, say that their pay has been eroded by 35% since 2008. Uh, does your analysis uh, back this up? It's a little bit dependent on which measure of inflation you use to calculate the erosion of pay. That number comes from the BMA, the, the union that represents doctors, and for that they use a measure of inflation called RPI. If you use uh, a measure of inflation called CPI, which is the more commonly used one, that is slightly lower. We we estimate that it's about a 16% pay cut compared to their cut of about 26%, although they're, they're estimated about 26%. So it's a little bit dependent on which metric you use, and there are benefits and cons to using different metrics. But overall, it has been a large pay decline since the beginning of last decade in real terms. And also, in terms of concerns from junior doctors, it's also wider conditions that they say in terms of uh, a diminished level of funding over the years, which has led to an impact on healthcare services. Again, what's your research say about that? Our research shows that they're, they're, they're correct about that. The state of NHS hospitals is far worse than it was a decade and a half ago. There's now um, difficulty actually carrying out procedures because of things like sewage leaks in hospital. There's insufficient equipment often to do the level of testing that needs to be done. There are far fewer beds than in other uh, similar healthcare systems um, and IT systems are rarely up to scratch. All that makes it much, much harder for them to do their jobs effectively. Uh, and on top of that, there's also dissatisfaction in other staff groups in the NHS as well, which leads to high levels of turnover and which can therefore also make it harder for them to do their jobs. So are you saying that the NHS hasn't been properly funded then? I think funding is a political choice that any government should make themselves. I think it's fair to say that the funding of the last 13 or so years, except for COVID, has been below trend levels of increases that the NHS has seen in the decades before that. Uh, it's also been particularly bad for capital spending, which is the, the bit of spending that influences things like building equipment, uh, IT systems that we talked about. It, by historical standards, that's been particularly low. So I think that it's up to the government to decide how much they want to spend on the health service. But it's definitely possible to say that the, that the recent decades have been less funding than, than the NHS might have been used to. OK, Stuart Hodinot, senior researcher, the London-based think tank, the Institute for Government. Thank you very much for sharing your thoughts uh, based on the research that you have done.